I know we just covered these behavior chain components, but there's often confusion over their meanings, so let's review. An antecedent comes before the problem behavior, and there are two kinds. The stimulus event or trigger is obvious because it's immediately prior to the behavior. You can and should make a change here in the stimulus event to keep the problem from occurring. You're in charge of the context. The setting event or set up is not usually obvious and is typically harder to manipulate. You can't change the fact that the child didn't get much sleep last night, but you could give him a low energy preferred activity first thing in the morning when he arrives so that he's not negatively set up for the day. If you know he has a headache and that sets me up, you can give him a cold cloth or baggie with ice in it to hold on his head for a few minutes before asking him to do a task. It's only a nice thing to do. If the child is ill, you can't fix that either, but you can smooth his day with preferred tasks and materials and ask the parent to see what can be done for the child's health. In these ways, you can manipulate the antecedent to minimize the effects of setting events. The word consequence is often misconstrued in our culture to mean punishment. There will be consequences, young lady. <laughs> Everyone remembers that. However, that's not the actual meaning of the word. It means whatever follows. Think about it. Yes, punishment follows, but so does reinforcement. If at all possible, you want to have already set up the environment so that your consequence will be a reinforcement rather than a punishment. You are in control of the context. You are in control. Remember that if an unacceptable behavior does occur, you have the choice to not notice it, strongly prompt the acceptable behavior, and then reinforce. That's a nice consequence.